Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my October 2023 uh, reading wrap-up. Dane reads. So I just have one book for you. This is Vegan Cookbook for Beginners uh, by Rockridge Press. It did have an author name attached to it on Goodreads, but um, as far as I can remember, I didn't actually see one inside the book. Um, yeah, I can't see a, a, an author name, but anyway. It was okay. To be honest, it's not really a cookbook. Like, sure, it does have a lot of recipes from here. There are no images for any of the recipes. And then this big chunk here, this is just all about vitamins, studies, why go vegan, all of that stuff. Um, it's okay, I guess, if you are new to veganism. For me, um, I think there were like two recipes in this that I took away. The issue that I have is like all of the recipes in this Again, it's because it's for beginners, so it's like, here's a salsa recipe, here is a pancake recipe, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yes, but I, I have all of these recipes, so there wasn't anything new to me. Um, but I am still going to give this to my girlfriend, Shay, who is relatively new to veganism, and maybe she will get some use out of it. Although, I think she gets most of her recipes, or she was getting most of them from TikTok. Okay guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is The Sabres Noctem Book 1, Blood for Coins by Cam Wolf, um, uh, page nomad here on Booktube. 3.5 out of 5 from me, uh, pretty professional quality release, especially for an indie. Uh, as you can see, the cover's real nice. The interior layout is very well done. Um, it's got a map. Um, it does feel a little bit short for a fantasy novel. Um, and also, so I have this thing with fantasy where all of the names wind me up because I'm just like, oh great, another world. Now I have to learn all of these new race names and new swear words and whatever else it is. Um, but that's a me thing rather, like with me reading fantasy in general. Uh, it's actually why I don't read a huge amount of fantasy anymore because I'm, I'm kind of done, <laughs> done with it. Um, but in terms of like, hitting fantasy tropes it very much does that um, I do just think it was a little short it read more like an introduction to the characters rather than the first book of a series um, also it bothers me on the back it says there has never been more beasts to kill or more coins to be taken it should be have there have never been more beasts to kill or more coins to be taken um, so that kind of grumbled me up as well but yeah overall 3.5 out of 5 all right, you guys, I have a ton of books to wrap up because I've been doing a lot of reading while on the treadmill at the gym. Not the treadmill, the uh, exercise bike. I'm just going to chip away at these, to be honest. I've got a lot of filming I need to do today. I've got so much of everything I need to do. But the first one that I want to talk about is To Be a Cat by Matt Haig. So this is kind of like a middle grade uh, take on The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. Basically a, you know, teenage boy um, wishes he was a cat and then he becomes one and he discovers maybe it's not all it's cracked up to be. There's a whole lot of lore to it as well and like world building and stuff. Some great characters. His best friend in particular was a great character as was the headmistress of his school. Um, it reminded me of Roald Dahl at his best as well. I mean, I put in my written review, there's like elements of horror to it. Not necessarily that it's a horror novel, but the situation in itself is kind of horrifying. And in that respect, it reminded me of Roald Dahl uh, in like The Witches. Um, the head teacher was very much in the vein of Miss Trunchbull as well. Uh, overall, really great read, 4.5 out of 5. A lot of these are going to have um, filmed reviews to follow up with them as well. Uh, then I read Handy Mandy and Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is just the latest in the Oz series. I enjoyed this more than I've enjoyed the last few of them, but I don't know how much of that is due to the fact that, again, I read it all in one go on the exercise bike, so it was a lot easier to kind of sink into it and get absorbed. But yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, Handy Mandy was a great character. She has, I think, eight or nine different arms, and they all do different things. So she's got, like, wooden arms, metal arms, etc., etc. Um... And it was just kind of cool to see how those came into play throughout the, the, the story. Other than that, it's just your same old Oz stuff. The same old kind of storyline, really, about someone trying to steal Ozma's throne and our heroes being determined to stop it. But yeah, it was pretty good. It was a 3.5 out of 5 for me. I read Under the Milk Wood by uh, Dylan Thomas. And yeah, it was really interesting. It was almost experimental. It reminded me of some of the like experimental poetry that I've read, even though it was like um, a play. Now it's you know it's published as a play, but really you're it's it's kind of like a, it's a play for voices. I think he called it. Really, to me, it read as though it would be best performed either as a full cast audio book or a radio play. Um, I'm sure you could still see it as a more traditional play as well. I don't know. I think they could even stage it by having the actors on stage behind the curtains so you can't hit, can't see them, you know? Um, but yeah, really, really beautiful. It's kind of, 
experimental with its language and its form, but at the same time very traditional, very British, basically tells of the goings on in this small uh, Welsh town. So I gave Under Milkwood a 3.5 out of 5. Then I read Hitler's Canary by Sandy Toxvig, so this is kind of a middle grade Second World War book about uh, the Nazi occupation of Denmark. It's based on Toxvig's own father's experiences of the resistance, Sandy Toxvig being a broadcaster, she's currently the host of QI as well. Uh, she's one of those, she's like a journalist slash public figure that I very much respect and admire, so it was cool to, you know, get to, to read one of her books. And um, yeah, basically, as I said, we're following this kind of tale of Danish bravery as they try not to be Hitler's Canary, the idea being that, uh, that Denmark was called Hitler's Canary because when Hitler commanded it, Denmark sang. Um, but no, there was a very kind of active resistance trying to get Jews out of the country to avoid persecution. And uh, it's very moving, very beautiful. My only criticism would be that the ending was kind of abrupt, you know. Um, but the book as a whole was fantastic. Full review coming soon. Uh, I think I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Then we have Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell. So this would be Cressida Cowell of How to Train Your Dragon fame. Wizards of Once is a new series she's been working on. It's a lot of fun. It's, the idea behind it is that you've got the wizards and the uh, warriors and kind of never the twain shall meet they don't really get on with each other historically there have been witches knocking around and um yeah the witches are not good news uh there's there's said to be no more witches now whether that's true or not you know we will find out as the book progresses um and yeah, it's another middle grade one, it's got some really lovely illustrations to it and it follows what happens when a wizard boy who's, whose magic is, is yet to come in so he hasn't kind of got the, the powers that he should have at that age he goes off to try and capture a witch and steal her magic and when he does so he bumps into a warrior girl and, you know, shenanigans ensue. They also go to both camps, which is cool, so you get to see both how the wizards live and how the warriors live. I gave Wizards of Once a 4 out of 5, I'm looking forward to reading more of the series. Then I read Q uh, by Christina Doucher. Uh, this was published as uh, Class... Fuck, what was it called? Masterclass. Uh, Dolce in, in the US. Dolce is also the author of Vox. She's got some other books. And it's very similar to Vox in that it's dystopian, Atwoodian. Um, kind of takes a look at our society and, and sort of investigates what could happen if it all went wrong, basically. So in, in this series... We're all measured by our uh, Q, which is our Q score, which is kind of like an IQ score, grade point average score, that kind of thing. And our results on that determine where we can go in life, what jobs we can get, all of that stuff. Um, it's reminiscent of both uh, like uh, Black Mirror, uh, the episode they did there, and then like the Chinese social scoring system, but to an extreme. Our main character is uh, a teacher. She's also a mother of two and she may have fudged the Q scores of her, of her daughter um, and her husband is the guy who kind of created the system as well so we, we see it from that point of view. Very like uh, again very thought provoking stuff. It's not an easy read but it is one that will make you think. Biggie says hi. So I gave QA 4 out of 5 didn't I Biggie? Yes? 4 out of 5? Yes. Um, I read most of these on the on the exercise bike at the gym by the way um, which is my new way of, of reading things. Are you going to just stand in the way all of the time now? Okay. Uh, then I read Autobiography by Morrissey. So Morrissey is of the Smiths. Uh, this caused a lot of um, con controversy when it came out because it was published as a Penguin, Penguin Black Classic. Um, and obviously he's a living person. This was a recent release, like 2018, I would guess. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. First published in uh, 2013, so I am just old and just remember it coming out. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, uh, it caused a lot of controversy when it came out. I mean, it's a decent enough autobiography. What I will say is, um, for me, for a start, the stuff that was most interesting was when he talked about his childhood, because that was really the autobiography of an entire generation rather than just he himself. Um, and. It's overwritten, it's quite flowery at times, like if you look at it, you will see it's huge old paragraphs as well, so it's pretty tough on the eyes. I listened to it via an audiobook and I found that to be uh, a lot more approachable than reading the physical thing. It was interesting, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Um, it's probably the most unusual celebrity autobiography I've read or, or up there, but um, you know, that's Morrissey for you.
All right, guys, just two books to wrap up for you. Uh, the first of them is The Bullet That Missed by Richard Osman. So this is book number three in the Marlowe Murder Club series. And um, yeah, it follows the kind of continued events of the, the Thursday Murder Club. It's kind of interesting because the plots sort of, well, they act as standalones, but they also build one from, you know, one on top of another. Uh, it's nice to see more of the characters' private uh, and personal lives as well, and then the actual core mystery to this was pretty good. I did say in my review uh, of this that um, I, I, I found that, like, if you were to judge this purely as a, a mystery book, you probably wouldn't enjoy it quite as much. Um, there are kind of a few... I guess weaknesses to it, um, but it's got the humour to it as well. And if you, you know, the same, same argument goes if you read it purely as a humorous book, I think you'd find some fault with it. But the fact that it's a humorous mystery, um, I think is it saving grace and it does pretty good at that. I gave it a strong 3.5 out of 5, did enjoy it, and I will be reading the next book in the series. And then after that I read uh, The Silver Princess in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. This is the Empty Grave Retrofit Edition. Um, it's kind of cool, it's got like decent graphics and stuff like that um, it's they've taken the public domain manuscript and and edited it and brought it up to date and removed a few bits from it that was kind of questionable and racist um, it's not as strong as the last of the um, um, Wizard of Oz series but at this point I mean I'm at number 32 they are all very similar so once you've read one you've kind of read them all I do still enjoy reading them for the puns and um, you know that that continues here so I, I can't give it anything less than a 3.5 out of 5 Okie dokie guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, that is On The Come Up by Angie Thomas. Uh, this is like a standalone but it's set in Garden Heights which is um, like her place, I guess you would call it the place that um, all of her books are set in. This follows the story of a 16 year old girl called Brie who wants to become a sort of a well known, successful and celebrated rapper. and. It's okay. It's not as good as um, The Hate You Give or uh, Concrete Rose. I also, I wasn't convinced by, so she does that thing which I get, I can understand why you would do it in this book, but when prose authors write uh, poetry, or in this case, rap lyrics, and it just didn't come across as genuine to me. Um, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. It felt like an author writing rap lyrics rather than actual rap lyrics. I mean, part of it was because a lot of them were kind of cliche as well. Um, but you know, it was okay, and I, I understand why she did it again. Um, and overall, it was it was a decent enough read. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, um, and I will be doing a full review of it soon. Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I picked this up because I really enjoyed Daisy Jones and the Six. I know that this one came out before then. They both have a similar vibe, like the way that she writes, sometimes she uses things like, uh, in this example, she uses uh, like uh, newspaper clippings and things like that to tell the story. So it's kind of an epistolary novel as well as just a traditional narrative. Uh, this is basically about, uh, I'm going to say young because she's about two years older than me, a young journalist in her mid-30s gets given the opportunity to write the sort of authorised biography of this ageing movie star who's had seven husbands throughout her career. And we kind of follow her as she goes through and interviews her and writes that story and we discover the story along along uh, along with her as she, as she learns it. So yeah, really good, really well written kind of gripping novel that makes you want to keep on reading as well and it's also got some interesting stuff on like I guess the patriarchy in fact it even has at the beginning which I liked for Lilith for Lila smash the patriarchy sweetheart um, and yes like uh, Evelyn Hugo's had to do some pretty pretty crappy things basically because she's a woman who wants to be successful so um, yeah I, I enjoyed it I would give it a four out of five Alrighty guys, just the one book to wrap up for you, that is Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. It's actually Palahniuk at his best really, it's kind of one of his earlier books, but I think it was when he was really discovering just how powerful he was as a writer. Lots of different sort of themes here, you've got the usual kind of violence as well, some identity crises. It starts off with a bang and never really lets up. Um, I'm not really going to tell you what the book is about because it's one of those where I read it and I'm still like, what the fuck did I just read? But it was, this, yeah, I mean, book list here, they called it a wild ride of a novel. I think that's a pretty good way of putting it. Um, you know, it's one of those where it really does, it starts off with a bang and, uh, you know, really powers on from there. Actually, I'll read you the first paragraph of it and that will give you a feel for what you're getting into. 
Where you're supposed to be is some big West Hills wedding reception in a big manor house with flower arrangements and stuffed mushrooms all over the house. This is called scene setting, where everybody is, who's alive, who's dead. This is Evie Cottrell's big wedding reception moment. Evie is standing halfway down the big staircase in the manor house foyer, naked inside what's left of her wedding dress, still holding her rifle. You can't beat uh, beginnings like that, and it just kind of keeps going from there, so yeah. Uh, four out of five for me from Visible Monsters by Chuck Paul and Nick. Alright, so there we have it. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of October 2023. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.